Today, I'm going to tell you about global citizenship, something that you might not know so well, but here am I. I'm going to define that for you. So, global citizenship is a mindset, which means someone is enjoying learning about different cultures. Why is that important for you? It's important because if you, if you are a global citizen, you know how to be happy wherever you go, wherever you are. Simple as that. So, I was in the U.S. and there's something interesting that I encountered. When I was, when I had a craving, when I had a craving for Chinese food, when you're away from home, you can't have your mom's cooking. So, I had to go to a Chinese restaurant. So, there I go. I was in a Chinese restaurant and two men walked in. So, they walked in and then they just sat down and ordered only one combo of sweet and sour chicken. Two guys, sweet and sour chicken. And when the food was served, one took the sweet and sour chicken and pulled it towards himself. And what did the other guy do? He took the rice bowl and reached for the soy sauce. And what he did, he was making soup for lunch. Rice with soy sauce. I was there, I was new to the environment, I was like, Okay, this is new in America. Welcome to America! So I'm not trying to stereotype anything, but uh, this is something new to me when I was there, young, new to the environment. The second time, I had another craving for Chinese food again. You know, Malaysians, we all love food, don't we all? Yes! Yeah! So I was craving, oh, I want to have lunch. So I uh, invited a friend of mine to go to a Chinese restaurant again to order our food. So as you know, usually the dishes are served in the middle and you have your own rice, correct? Same scenario. So I got my rice and I saw the food. Ah, my food is here. And then my friend, what did he do? So he had his rice. He did the same thing. He reached for the soy sauce. He was making soup again. I was like, Jimmy, what are you doing? We're supposed to come here for Chinese food. But he told me, this is what I was craving for all along when you invited me. I want my soy sauce with rice. So, in this example, I was trying to demonstrate to you why it's important to ask questions. Because when you are in a new environment, you don't know who these people are. You don't know what they do. And if you don't ask any questions, it doesn't matter if you are there for leisure traveling or for, for on a business trip. If you don't ask the questions, you will never know. So this is my favorite American holiday. Why is it my favorite? Okay, so I have to tell you this a little bit of background story. So I was very strict with myself. I uh, had a very strict diet plan. So I only have a cheat day maybe once a, once a week. So this special day, I'm happy because why? I can throw away all my diet plans, don't have to stick to it, and I can eat without guilt. What? Because everyone is doing the same thing. We all eat, enjoy the Super Bowl, and get ready for shopping. At night, we light up and get our, our sweet good deals in town for the Black Friday sales. So, when you are away from home, if you are still thinking about how sick you are, you are getting something that's called, that's an emotional illness. It is called homesick. If you keep concentrating on how you feel within yourself and you don't get help, you don't divert your focus, you're gonna feel sick even more. So that's what I did. I enjoyed myself with my new friends and explored the new environment. Okay, so you might think of Thanksgiving, you might relate Thanksgiving with Turkey. Okay, well, Turkey is a big meal for Thanksgiving, you get a Turkey is slightly bigger than chicken and tastier. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Turkey legs. Okay, I just mentioned turkey is slightly bigger than a chicken, right? So a turkey leg, which is the drumstick of it, like our chicken in Malaysia, is only then, only that it is three, three times bigger than a regular chicken drumstick. So that's what I had. 
at the fair. This is a state fair um, in the U.S. So I had it all to myself because at that moment I thought this will be a precious experience for me. I'm not gonna get it a second chance if I'm somewhere else. This is special. I'm gonna try it because why? That's your experience, and nobody can take it away from you. So another thing that's very exciting about the fair is the cars. So you will see people driving old cars, hitting each other. So that's what they do in the fair, and you will see the crowd cheering for them. Hey, go for it, go for it, wow, wow. All the cheering from the crowds, and this is how, enjoy, uh, how enjoyable the event was for them. Here we also have the same thing. We call it, we, there we call it demolition derby. That's the name of the activity. But here we call it a car accident <laughs> involving multiple vehicles. So that's interesting to me when I was in the, uh, in the foreign place. When you are away from home, like I said, I still relate that to food. I miss my mom's cooking, but I can't find that in the U.S. So we get, like a group of us, we get very creative when we are craving for nasi lemak. We went to, into a supermarket, an Asian supermarket, and we get every ingredient that we can possibly think of and prepare our own sambal, our own ikan bilis, and assemble our own nasi lemak. We do the same with the Chinese Hainanese chicken. We created our own chili recipe, garlic chili recipe. So we own that. When you are there, it's very exciting because you will meet people who did alike. And together, you can do something special together. That's what we did. We organized an event called the International Food Festival. All of them, all of us, we were proud of ourselves. We thought we are a chef now, after so many years. We can cook. So that's what we did. We have booths selling our home cookies, nasi lemak, egg tarts. So those are the recipes uh, that we created ourselves, but we sell them to the foreigners and say, this is authentic, you should try it. So that's what we did when we are away from home. Still speaking of food. Sorry, I'm really a food lover, so I'm just gonna keep, keep a lot of examples about food. So, I'm also a dumpling lover, okay? But back then, I didn't know much about how to make a dumpling because, you know, you can just go to your, the, the store, the local store, and you get your dumplings, just order, just order it and you get yours. But there, nobody is gonna do that for you. So, I got very creative, and then I got a big confidence after my several tries and errors figure out my recipe, so I was proud of myself. So I said, hey guys, why not let's do some cultural event together so we can exchange our culture. So everybody gathered around the table and I realized that, hey, actually I don't know how to make one. <laughs> Only then I went to Google for it, I do some research, then I learned. During the process, it is a self-discovery process. I learned that I don't know much about my culture. So I explored, finally I presented to them, and also, you know, it's a DIY, DIY session, so they had their fun creating their own DIY. The product is not a matter, but the process is. So when you are, when you overcome your culture shock, you overcome your homesickness, you gather something that you figure that you could use to influence others. You get the confidence. You go around and share your culture with others. So you can both exchange information and learn from one another. So that's what I did. So I got together with the kids. These are Girl Scouts and it's an event. So I, sh I, I let them touch my baju kabaya. Oh, okay. So this is what you can get in Malaysia. They will show me, Miss Adeline, this is what you will get in America. So that's how our, we exchange our information and get to know one another. In the same time, we also expand our worldview. 
things that we don't want to see, that does, does not mean it doesn't exist. So we learn through culture and change. So here I present to you a culture shock cycle. Okay, we need to get closer. So it begins with you flying to a place that you have never been, a stranger place. And it started with all the excitement, things that you do not know before you are discovering. This is called the honeymoon phase. So you're discovering, like, remember the soy sauce story? I was, I thought it was bizarre <laughs> to, to make your soy sauce soup that way. So um, that's my discover, discovery phase. And then we move on. As time goes by, you go, you, you experience a lot of differences. You see that big or, big or small, there are still differences. You are not used to it, okay? So if you don't do anything about it, you just let it hang over there, it will go move on to stage three, which is the emotional illness that I mentioned earlier on. It's homesick. You think about your home all the time, your family, and you will start noticing yourself turning on uh, your computer and watch the drama, uh, and your shows from home. So you'll be doing that. You kind of uh, isolate yourself sometimes because it's comforting and you are healing. But that's not a very, um, a, a very good way to handle it. So I would suggest that why not go out and meet some new friends and get to know new people. Then that's number four. You go to participate in the Thanksgiving celebration. You go into someone's home, celebrate with others. And you can also go to the state fair. So those are local activities that you can go to. For example, that's my, my example, but I encourage you when you are facing this kind of situation when traveling, this is what you can do. Enjoy local activities and don't be afraid to meet some new friends. Then you get adjusted, you get settled in, and finally, you need to learn how to integrate your own culture into the local culture, so you feel more at home. That's number five, that's adjustment. Okay, these are four stages that you will face when you are in the host country. You'll be facing the same problem again when you are back in your home country. So, when you're home, you're excited to go home. When you decide to go home, you realize that things have changed. They are no longer the same as you have thought. So, you need to readjust again. You need to participate in local activities, meet up with your friends, expand from there, and get adjusted. So, a global citizen is more likely to experience this cycle again and again. Doesn't matter where you go. So my takeaway for you today is AIG, the three steps to help you become a global citizen. A stands for ask questions. Don't be shy. If you don't know something, ask. Ask and learn. I stands for get involved. There are a lot of activities that new friends wait for you to discover. So don't be shy and get involved in local activities. Three is G. Can you guess what it is? So you learn from their culture. And this is the time when you should learn how to give back to the community. My challenge for you today, my friend, is to go outside. Go out of your comfort zone so you can explore and try something that you always wanted to try. This is only the starting of your journey. Home should be your last destination. Come back home with valuable experience so your, ex your story can influence others and make a change in their life. Thank you.